I'm Leo Walter for Kit Guru, and this is MSI Aegis X, a small form factor PC that pretty much tells us that we have to reevaluate everything we think we know about small computers. This is a super duper high end gaming PC. Despite its tiny size, it's got a volume of just under 20 litres, 19.7 to be precise. Uh, it packs a Core i7-6700K Skylake processor, GTX 1080 graphics cards, full-on gaming graphics, full-size graphics card. Uh, it's got SSDs in RAID. It's got a whole bunch of DDR4 16 gig running at 2133 megahertz. Uh, you've got a two terabyte hard drive as a backup for your games. It's got everything, absolutely everything, uh, and it's small. It's, it's also got a huge price. <laughs> There's no two ways about that. The price is uh, a couple of pence under £2,000. Uh, but then, realistically, GTX 1080, that's £600 right there. So it's going to be colossally expensive. So this small PC does everything your regular PC will do, and it costs two grand into the bargain. And when it goes on sale in the UK, it's going to be available at PC World and Very, and then Amazon UK will have it, um, uh, which I'm slightly surprised about, actually. They'll do going to PC World in the UK for a a PC like this for that sort of money is not what I expect. Again, you just have to reevaluate what you think you know about computers. So it's small. Um, if we turn to the back, you'll see it's got Wi-Fi antennae. It's got uh, a whole load of uh, input outputs, as you expect. There's the outputs from the graphics cards. There's the output from the motherboard. And on the front, we've got here a USB Type C 3.1 that is along with a pair of USB 3s, and then headset jacks and such like there, and a power button up the top. So. It's a conventional PC in that it uses mini ITX hardware, uh, DDR4 memory is so dims, and the uh, pair of SSDs are M.2s, PCI Express, NVMe, yada yada, all the usual acronyms. Uh, obviously, full pictures on Kit Guru. The two SSDs, 128GB, and they run in RAID. Uh, slight unusual setup in that one of the memory modules and one of the SSDs on one side of the motherboard and the other on the other. Uh, we've seen a similar setup on, I forget which of the Azure. Zeus Z170 motherboards it was. Anyway, this setup's the same. So it's mini ITX, uh, but it's packed with not, not exactly laptop technology, but MSI these days being very much a gaming laptop company. It certainly borrows from uh, their laptop side of things. You've got a whole bunch of things like a killer a Wi-Fi and such like, and also they've used their Nahimic audio and some other bits and pieces. Um, so it is a small PC, it's packed with goodies. They've also used their uh, control software to control the lighting and such like, so you can uh, have some fun and games, which is it's a nice touch and no reason why not. Question has to be, how can you put a Core i7 and a GTX 1080 in a small chassis out of thing cooking itself? And actually the solution to that is really quite straightforward. The graphics card is a full-on graphics card, so uh, it simply blows out the rear. It's slightly unusual in that they put the thing upside down, so the PCI Express connector is at the top, and the graphics card plugs upwards, as you'll see in the photos on Kitguru in the usual way, which means that the graphics card can suck air in through this grill here, and then obviously blows the hot air out the back. Very neat, very simple. The processor, the way they've done that is, they simply put a liquid cooler on it. It's a tiny liquid cooler. It's The rad's about 100 mil by 100 mil, and the cooling fan is 92 mil diameter, so it's a really small liquid cooler. It works perfectly well. Uh, when I scraped the thing under load, it got up to 72 degrees, it idled at 43. This is on um, a reasonably warm day, actually, in the UK. Uh, idled at 43. We went up to 72, which in Core i7-6700K Skylake terms is not bad because that process is not good at shifting heat. So admirable job done. I had two nasty shocks with this um, PC when it arrived. Um, it had clearly come from another reviewer, so I am not saying for one second this is how you would receive it if you bought this thing from uh, PC World or wherever. Uh, the first was when it arrived, it was noisy, and I wasn't uh, impressed, actually. I was unimpressed. And <laughs> it's quite simple. The, the control software has three modes, silent performance, uh, this is their gaming app, uh, silent performance, and there's an overclock mode. Now, I have to say, the overclock mode for me um, did nothing, uh, but I'm not fussed. I don't want to overclock a Skylake in a small form factor chassis. It's got enough performance anyway, so I wasn't fussed about that. Silent mode and performance mode, the thing was it came in performance mode, and that was quite rackety. Uh, 
Clicking down the silent mode, it's actually pretty darn good, surprisingly good. It really showed the liquid cooling on the uh, processor work well, and the graphics card GTX Navy is quite a quiet cooling solution on this MSI graphics card. One wrinkle is this is the power supply here. It is a 600 watt 80 plus silver rated power supply, which in the great scheme of things, you've got gold, platinum and titanium. Silver these days is a bit old and crusty. And it's got a tiddly little 40 mil cooling fan there. Um, and you can hear it. I mean, there's no two ways about it. I, I, as soon as I saw it, actually, I thought, oh dear. But it wasn't as awful as I expected, but it was not silent. And that's just all there is to it. A tiny cooling fan, shifting air, you're going to be able to hear it. Shame that. Um, but it's a funny thing because this sort of plinth that houses the power supply is actually significant to the whole form factor of this computer. You'll see it sort of kicked up in this alien predator uh, Star Wars Darth Vader helmet kind of styly. Um, it's kicked up, that's not just a cosmetic thing. Under here we have a grill which is the exhaust from the CPU cooler and I think that's led MSI to think right in that case we've got this sort of plinth so we're going to house the power supply there and therefore it's got to be small form factor, low profile and therefore it's got a tight and they've kind of been led down a certain route that I don't think has worked too well. It could be worse but it, it's not ideal. Uh, it's actually to the extent where I personally would be much happier if they had to put on a damn great laptop power brick, like an external thing. I mean, some of their power, uh, power bricks we've seen on some of the really big Titan laptops, they are hefty great. I mean, 300 watts, 350 watts is, I think, the highest rated we've seen. Uh, and the thing is, of course, they are silent, literally silent. Now, they're big slabs of engineering, but when you're paying two grand for a PC, I don't think that's too much to ask to actually have an external power brick do away with that pass by there, this would please me. Anyway, if we park that thing there, which is on the gripe rather than drama front, then we have a PC, it's small. Why do you want a very small PC? Well, this is actually a good question. And actually this here is a handle. It's, it's part of the chassis, it's metal. It's not just a styling trick. And it means you can actually easily pick this PC up and walk with it. You can take this PC to a LAN party without any difficulty whatsoever. LAN parties ain't my thing. I can, however, see the market. To the extent where if you're into taking a Titan or some such to a LAN party, I think this is a legitimate alternative because you're going to want an external monitor and a mouse and a keyboard anyway if you're really gaming for serious. Well, here you go. If, on the other hand, you use your Titan or similar laptop with the screen, maybe it's a different game. Uh, one other thing that's quite cutesy, uh, if you take this supplied HDMI pass-through cable and you plug it into the HDMI output on the graphics card, I'll get it on the right thing, on the graphics card, and then you plug it into this VR port here as it's cunning, VR link port as it's labeled there, like so. Then what you actually do is you're connecting uh, this HDMI port here, it's a pass-through cable, to your graphics card. What it means is that when you want to plug in your Oculus Rift or um, HTC Vive or whatever other VR headset you might have, you can simply plug it in to the front, which is just convenient, makes perfect sense. Now obviously an HDMI pass-through is not going to you know, excite too many people, but it's nice, it works, it does a decent job. Nice idea, like it. Um, so. That obviously could be applied to any PC that had uh, an HDMI pass-through uh, port going from the front to the rear of the PC. Nice touch, however. Um, overall, oh, the other, the other, I meant to mention the other uh, fright I had. So the first fright was the noise. It came noisy, switched it down, it went quiet, that was good. The second fright was... I did all the benchmarking on this system and the performance wasn't right. It played all the games beautifully and everything was right, but the graphics scores were low. In 3D Mark, they just were not where I expected them to be. So, I don't know, for argument's sake, uh, Fire Strike, the overall score was 12,500, um, which is terrible. And that's because the graphics score was very low. It's under 14,000 when it should be way above 20,000. Uh, I ripped out the graphics driver, did a clean uninstall, reinstalled the same graphics driver, and the performance leapt up, absolutely leapt up to where it should be for a Core i7 with GTX 1080, with DDR4, with RAID SSD, yada, yada, yada. Um, it was lovely. And I have no explanation for this, uh, but ripping the driver out and reinstalling fixed it. It does, however, highlight that when a GTX 
X1080 doesn't work to full effect for whatever reason, you still get a damn fine gaming experience. Uh, I had no idea there was a problem until I actually looked at the numbers. The performance gave me no hint of a problem. Reinstall performance up hugely. So there we go. Funny old life. Um, that was the other, but anyway, fix, so job done. Uh, and I'm going to blame the previous reviewer rather than MSI on that one. So overall, if you're looking for a small form factor high-end gaming PC for a LAN party, this is your baby. If you fancy something that looks a bit funky, yeah, why not? If you want a Core i7-6700K with GTX 1080 and all the bits and pieces and you don't want to pay a lot of money, not so great because I reckon the components in this system are about 1700, maybe 1750. Um, so you're paying about 250 quid for the privilege of a funktastic chassis. And I do like the chassis. Um, I don't like the power supply, I do like the layout and the small form factor I'm all in favor of. But of course you can, if you choose, build this kit, this spec, into a small form factor PC and you can liquid cool it at any great difficulty. Um, it's a, a clearly a custom uh, all-in-one they put on the thing, but nonetheless liquid cooling a processor, that's, that's not rocket science. So if you want a small form factor PC for the home with this spec, you could easily build it yourself or get it from uh, another PC supplier for less money, which means you have to love the looks. And yeah, I'm, I'm fine with them. I'm, I'm not totally blown away. I like them, they're, they're good enough. Uh, it's some clever engineering, but what MSI has done is a bit of clever packaging. They've taken components we're familiar with bunged them into a small chassis and they've made it work. Good luck to them. I mean, they've done a fine job. Um, so there we go. I'm Leo Wood for Kit Guru. This is MSI Aegis X.